Hello from ABA Annual 2016 in San Francisco, California. I'm Lene Tucker, the student editor for the Law Student Division from the University of South Dakota School of Law. And I'm Chris Morgan, 12th Circuit Governor for the Law Student Division, and I'm a 3L at the Gonzaga University School of Law in Spokane. And I'm Linda Klein, President-Elect of the American Bar Association. And we're on the road with Legal Talk Network. Linda, thank you so much for joining us on the road. It's a pleasure to be here. Today we are introducing to you, our leaders, the 140th president of the ABA. We are interviewing at the ABA annual meeting, and I know you've been very busy. So how has your experience been in San Francisco this week? Well, it's been a whirlwind. I've been here already for six days, and I've given many speeches, seen so many great members of the ABA, met so many lawyers and law students. It's just been great fun. So glad you've been enjoying your time here in San Francisco. Uh, Where's home for you usually? I live in Atlanta, Georgia, and I've been practicing law in Atlanta since 1983. Wow. Ow. So if you could just tell us a little bit about how you got to where you're at today. Uh, if you could just start with your experience in law school, how that was, uh, where you went. Well, I went to law school probably like all of you did because I wanted to help people. And I enjoyed the experience in law school. Well, maybe not as much as I've enjoyed practicing law. <laughs> um, but one thing that law school allowed me to do was indeed to help people. I originally thought that I was going to be an activist for senior citizens, and that didn't exactly work out the way my career has turned. But I will tell you that the very first pro bono case I ever took about three months out of law school, was helping a senior citizen, a woman that was so badly disabled that she would never know that I helped her, but the work that I did makes sure that I never will forget her. And by helping her live out the rest of her years of life uh, very comfortably uh, made a difference to me. And I think it will make a difference to all of you uh, as young lawyers uh, to try pro bono cases because they, they make you feel so wonderful. Oh, definitely. Did you have any mentors when you were in law school? When I was in law school, I would say mentoring was not something that we we even used the word. And as a young lawyer, we didn't really use the word mentoring. But of course, there were always professors at law school that stood out as people who cared about what your vision was for your future and tried to help you get there along the way. So yes, I guess I did have mentors. We just didn't call them that. Mm -hmm. Did you learn anything really profound from those people who were there for you? as you were getting into law? I think that what they taught me was to follow my dreams. If I wanted to help people, if I wanted to do pro bono work, that I should follow that. Uh, One thing that maybe they taught me was it was so important to get involved in the Bar Association. And so as a young lawyer, I immediately got involved in the Bar Association. I did it because uh, I didn't know anybody when I moved to Atlanta and I wanted to meet people. Uh, But more importantly, together, the young lawyers that I met in bar associations, we did so much great community service and pro bono service, and I made lifelong friends. Yeah, that's great. So one of the things that law students are always encouraged to do is to take advantage of networking opportunities. Do you have any stories about when networking was helpful in your career or anything in particular, maybe someone you met along the way who uh, served as an example? I can think of so many people like that. Because as a young lawyer, I would come to bar meetings, particularly ABA meetings, and I would meet lawyers that wanted to help me. They were very, very generous with their time. I remember one particular person uh, who's a lawyer, it was a lawyer from New York, and I would bring my files and I would ask him for help. Uh, As a young lawyer, I had tort cases to work on. And I remember I would say, so what's this case worth? And he'd say, well... In Nassau County, New York, it's worth $500,000. And in Brooklyn, New York, it's worth a million dollars. And in the Bronx, New York, it's worth $6 million. But in Georgia, nothing. (laughs) (laughs) But the point of it is is that these lawyers who were very experienced were so happy to take the time to help me as a young lawyer. And those are the best mentors to have. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Is there anyone particularly famous or interesting uh, who you've had the opportunity to meet maybe through your work uh, in the ABA? 
I've met so many spooky smart people, <laughs> people who are at the top of their careers in their specific area of the law. Uh, I've met chief justices. I've met political leaders. Uh, by being involved in the ABA, I can't believe how as, as a law student and as a young lawyer, I had access to all of these people and they were so friendly and kind and generous with their time. It's an incredible opportunity. So in just a couple of days, you're going to be starting your year as president. So how did you know that you were going to be a good fit for leadership in the ABA? I guess I, the harder I worked, the luckier I got. So I worked on lots of different projects in the ABA over the last 30 plus years. I got to meet lots of people. I got to learn about the American Bar Association. I got to learn about uh, the practice of law. I got to learn about public service. And with all of that experience, uh, I guess I'm ready. So now that you're in one of the most influential leadership roles, uh, what plans do you have for the association moving forward? I'm glad you asked that question because I'm dying to tell you. Yeah. Well, we have a major initiative this year, and that is bringing legal services to veterans. Uh, American military personnel, they make so many sacrifices, and then they continue to sacrifice after they've come home. Service-connected injuries can be very debilitating, and it makes it nearly impossible for the veterans to navigate the complicated legal system so that they can get the care they need. And untreated, these kinds of invisible wounds can cause loss of a job or loss of housing. And for some people, unfortunately, it can lead to an encounter with the criminal justice system. So our veterans returning home, they really do need our help. These are people who took an oath saying that they would die for our freedom. And we want to be sure that as lawyers, we give back to them as well. So I've launched an initiative uh, to mobilize legal services for veterans. And we've got lots of different things that the uh, people that are serving on the initiative will do. We've got a 20-member commission that's uh, headed by Nan Dorenzi, who is a retired three-star rear admiral, and Dwight Smith, a lawyer from Tulsa, Oklahoma, who has held several key leadership positions in the American Bar Association. So among the things that they're going to do is they're going to explore medical legal partnerships and how bringing a lawyer onto the medical team can solve some of the underlying problems that cause veterans to need medical attention, like homelessness. We're going to look at veterans' treatment courts because they've been a very successful uh, experiment in many places throughout the United States, try to expand them, to look at whether there's a civil role in veterans' treatment courts as well as a criminal justice role. Uh, we're going to engage law schools, the ones that already have veterans clinics and the ones that might want to have them in the future. We're going to look at incubator programs where young lawyers and underemployed lawyers can learn under supervision how to handle many of the problems that veterans have. Most of the problems veterans have are similar legal problems to many Americans. Domestic relations, uh, landlord-tenant issues, debtor-creditor issues. So if you uh, have an opportunity to be trained in an incubator, you would certainly have uh, an opportunity to learn to make you practice ready just about anywhere and for anyone. Uh, we're promoting also legal checkups. Uh, many people get a medical checkup every year. Well, sometimes people have problems that they don't realize are legal problems. And for veterans to get a legal checkup, it certainly would be beneficial for them. Uh, we're also going to try to address the unique legal needs of women veterans who are homeless. I'm told that the fastest growing homeless population in America is women veterans, and we can certainly do better for them. There are some people who are interested in helping us get a certification for people to specialize in veterans' legal problems, and we're going to be looking at that. So those are some of the things that the uh, Veterans Legal Initiative is going to do, but there's something that everyone can participate in, and I want to tell you about that. This year, we're going to have two pro bono dates or times that anybody can volunteer to help veterans. Our traditional pro bono week in the ABA is the last week in October. This year, we're extending that first week to get to November 11, Veterans Day. And so we're asking everyone right around Veterans Day to please volunteer to do pro bono legal services for veterans. And then send us your photographs and, and your flyers, and we'll publicize them to show just the amount of good that lawyers and law students are doing to help veterans. But this year we're adding a second pro bono day, about six months later at Memorial Day. And we want to be sure that veterans know that we're thinking about them as well on Memorial Day. 
And so we're asking all lawyers and law students to volunteer to do pro bono legal assistance for veterans around Memorial Day as well. So Veterans Affairs is a very important topic for both the legal community and just society as a whole. So how can we do a better job as citizens of the U.S. to support our colleagues who are veterans? Number one is to volunteer to help them. And as lawyers and law students, a great way to do that is to use your training and talent to help them navigate the very complicated uh, legal network. Wonderful. So uh, I know I speak on behalf of all of us at the Law Student Division uh, that we're really looking forward to all your hard work on all of this over the next year or so. Now, looking forward for a second, uh, you know, at the end of your term, this time next year, what do you think or what do you hope would be your biggest accomplishments? Well, we've talked about veterans and helping veterans. The other thing is we're coming uh, up on election season, and at ambar.org slash vote, there's a website full of very important nonpartisan, bipartisan uh, information about voting. And we've got a uh, voting uh, card that people can download. They can print it or they can send it electronically. And it's called Vote Your Voice. And it's the idea is for everybody to be encouraged to participate in the election that's coming up. We want everybody to exercise their obligation as citizens and their right to vote. Uh, but at that website, ambar.org slash vote, there's a map of the United States, and you click on any state, and you'll get all the information about voter registration, time off to vote, and all the laws that pertain to voting in your state. So I'm hoping that people will use that, and that will be one of our accomplishments. And another thing that we're looking at is the lawyer's role in the right to an early childhood education and we want to know that all young people in this country have the right to a good, solid primary education so that we'll have a pipeline filled with people qualified to go to law school and also an educated citizenry in our democracy. Before we close out for today, I just have one last question for you. For our listeners who want to follow up, how can they reach you? ABA president at AmericanBar.org. Thank you, Linda, for joining us. And follow me at Linda Klein Law on Twitter. Well, listeners, we've reached the end of the road for today's episode. We want to thank our guests for tuning in. If you liked what you heard today, please rate us on iTunes. We'll see you next time for another episode of On the Road with Legal Talk Network. If you'd like more information about what you've heard today, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via iTunes and RSS. Find us on Twitter and Facebook or download our free Legal Talk Network app in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.